All right, welcome back. It's still The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa as we head off straight to Off the Press to analyze the front pages of major dailies. We have Ezekiel Yai, Tokyo's on standby. Ezekiel, it's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Thanks for having me. All right, uh, we'll take a look at the leadership. Uh, we'll start off with the leadership newspaper this morning. Uh, the banner caption says that federal government vows to unveil perpetuators of Kaduna and Plateau attacks. Sounds like, uh, you know, some positive energy here and the body language might just be changing. But 24 hours after Northern Elders' resignation, uh, Elders' resignation call to President Muhammad Buhari, let's not forget that the Northern Elders are asking that the President resign. And that's it this morning. You have several riders underneath the bold caption. Another uh, rider, or the first rider says, say we're working to free adoptees. Call for president's resignation, not solution to insecurity. That's what the presidency is saying. Reps lament protracted terrorist attacks and ask president to implement security submit report. Interesting. Issuers may cough out uh, 119 million naira compensation for train attacks uh, victims. That's what you find here. And away from that, Senate passes revised 2022 fiscal framework today. 24 billion naira fraud, Supreme Court affirms expansion director's six year uh, jail term and uh, making uh, the front page this morning. And we'll just check out one or two before we move away. 1.8 million new PVCs ready for collection. Just as you have, uh, you know, the authority saying 45 uh, percent of the PVCs are invalid. That's a lot. Uh, looking at, you know, the elections in 2023 and the fact that we're asking that we have people be involved. 29 die, others missing in Sokoto, both mishap these are some of the headlines on the leadership all right away from that we'll move on next to the punch newspaper this morning security is the main story security agents aiding bandits alleged reps demand nsa ministers sacking soldiers posted to zamfara gave a uniform to bandits in plateau state deputy speaker is quoted in that gunmen killed 150 in plateau villages 30 in ebony a number of police station attacked um presidency replies northern elders rules out buhari's resignation blames past governments all right so just below the picture all there army arrests uh, 12 imposters once again use of military belt t-shirts other stories on the punch this morning 677 drug traffickers jailed 3359 arrested in three months greed collapse federal government approves 1.4 billion naira for power transmission project 28 drowned in Sokoto Kano accident, a village head buries five children. Two Ikoi high rise buildings fail integrity test, risk collapse. Osinachi, church unaware of abuse, a minister says husband married to another woman. NBA or the Slam Army for hiding or show killers demand prosecution. Uh, just uh, one or two more. Uh, federal government's. Uh, Commercial loans rise by 31%, heat $14.67 billion. Uh, More stories, uh, I'll be courageous as Nigeria's president, that's Tinubu, kidnapped train passengers, families protest today, federal government assures of rescue. CVR, 45% of completed registrations nationwide invalid, says INEC. Those are the major stories on the punch this morning. Let's take a look at the Daily Independent newspaper away from the punch. Federal government prefers politicking to resolving ASU strike. That's what the union is saying. Blames Nigerians as 1.7 million students sit at home. Really? Why well, Nigerians should be blamed for uh, the strike. 
Slams federal government over new institutions while 104 versities remain short. These new institutions or private institutions that the government has given a license to. Nasu and Sanu strike set to go indefinite in two weeks. So you have Nasu and uh, Sanu also proposing to join the strike. Away from that 2023 presidential poll, Nigeria needs me even as I need Nigeria. Uh, Find out who's saying that. Gunmen attack police station in Anambra and kill four cops. Abuja Kaduna train attack. Bandits connived with Boko Haram to unleash havoc. That's what the federal government is saying. And INEC raises the alarm over invalid registration, just like I mentioned, about 45%. Moves to prosecute erring staff. Supreme Court orders expansion director Yusuf to refund 22.9 billion naira to the federal government, affirms six-year jail term. And in security, reps accuse security agencies of complicity uh, with complicity once the NSA defense chief sacked. Uh, these are some of the headlines you find this morning on uh the daily independence newspaper uh, that's the much we can take for the want of time all right uh, finally the nation newspaper bandits boko haram packed behind uh renewed insecurity i void 1.1 million voter registration timetable sacrosanct police pension fraud ex-director to refund 22.9 billion naira six-year jail term affirmed Lekki Ikoyi Link Bridge, a tolling resumes tomorrow. Fire me, Olawipo Hashim to John Preston show ticket uh, raise cracks over zoning consensus dipping in PDP. Those are the stories uh, we're taking or looking at on the nation this morning. Ezekiel and Yaitok, thank you for joining us this morning. We appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. All right, so um, let's start off with this one. The, f the federal government vows to unveil perpetrators of uh, Kaduna and the plateau attacks. Now, this is not the first time we're hearing the federal government, or would this be the second time from the president or the, the federal government being shocked to you know condemning the attack, and now they're vowing that they will unveil. And uh, it probably might just sound like some kind of good news, but what are your thoughts? Um, they, they have to say something. So they are saying something. Do I believe it? No, I don't. The reason is simple. We are in this state of insecurity because of what I personally um, see as complacency or being complicit directly or indirectly. We all know how security works. We all know how things are done. Mr. El Rufai has said more than should be said. We know who these people are. We know where the, the camps are. We know who their funding agencies are. We know all these things. He said that much. He didn't say it privately. It wasn't a tapped conversation. It was a public conversation. And then what has been done about it? Nothing, absolutely nothing. One of our, my friends um, told a story in Delta State where, you know, these um, people got into the mother's farm and they ravaged the whole farm. And when he went to the DPO, the DPO simply told him, Madam, sorry, there's not much I can do about it. They went to the commissioner of police and the commissioner of police kind of, um, you know, like um, rebuked the DPO. You shouldn't have said so. But what happened at the end of the day? It's like, OK, let's go and see what has been done. And then they looked at the thing and then, okay, we'll pay them compensation of what, 70,000 naira. And I ask a question, somebody comes to your farm, rampages, ravages, everything, and you cannot do anything about it. Why is that so? There isn't that, you see, we have an efficient, effective military system in this country, extremely competent. But the military training, to the best of my knowledge, is has a short has has um has a, a, a challenge in the training in the sense that they take orders and they mind the body language of whoever gives the orders i think that we've not been able to get the body language that says smoke them out 
And I am praying God that we'll manage ourselves and get through this and let Nigerians open their eyes, you know, and know who each person is, not from what they say. I have a new saying today, go back 20 years. That is what every Nigerian should do. Go back 20 years and interrogate who wants to be your president. Go back 20 years and interrogate who wants to be your governor. Go back 20 years. Look at the person's temperament. Look at his character. Look at his personality. Look at his priorities. Look at the things he's done in the past, his antecedents. Go back seven years, sorry, 20 years. That's got to be the new hashtag. Read, read the things he's put in the, in, the, in the papers or in the media about certain issues, whether it is about security or about his tribe or about his religion or about just go back 20 years. And I want to pray the media to take this as an assignment to dig back 20 years, minimum 20, 25 years, but 20 is enough so that you can tell who a person is. It's just like the matter you were discussing about marriage and things like that. You get into a relationship with a person who is just trying to manage you for a few uh, weeks or months and then marries you and then you start to say, oh my God, no, a man is who he is. Go back 20 years, find out his relationship with his family. Find out his relationship with the friends he's had in the past. Find out marriage is a serious... Ma anyway, th th that's not a topic. <laughs> Let me stay on what you have said. But, but Ezekiel, yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's good that you know, you're coming back to the issue. Eventually, we probably might just get to that point where you are. But what is difficult? Why has it become so difficult for the federal government or the government itself to take action? No, it's not difficult. It's not at all difficult. They are not interested. But, but that's what it seems. It, it seems like it's, it's not, difficult. It's not, what it seems. it's not what it seems. Let me tell you something very easy. Two things. Number one, a court of competent jurisdiction declared these people terrorists. Look at your papers today. Today, today, today. How is government referring to them? Think about it. A court has declared them terrorists. Look at the papers today, today, today. The papers that you are looking at, the headlines of today. How is that same government referring to these people? Is it not still bandit? Oh. What does that then tell you about the mindset of the government to these people? For as long as they are bandits, there are certain rules of military engagement you cannot apply. But if they are terrorists, we know what to do and you are allowed because the war crimes tribunals are still there. They will call you back 20 years after you've left the office. But if you're, you can stand on the ground that these are terrorists, there are things you can do. So as at today, what is the mindset of your government, of our government? These guys are not yet terrorists. They are still bandits. So what does that tell you about their disposition? All right, of All right Mr. Etok, let's uh, leave the issue of insecurity for one moment because uh, if we keep on talking about it, it will sound like broken records because we know all the issues and um, we similarly are not really having the body language to want to you know, do what is needful. But let's talk about um, education now. You know, it's been two months uh, since February the 14th, uh, Valentine's Day, ASU had been on strike. It's been over about 60 days or so. You know, but from what we hear now, they are in the news, daily independent captions or captures it this way. Federal government prefers uh, or prefers politicking to resolving ASU strike. That's what the union is saying. Blames Nigerians as 1.7 million students sit at home. Slams federal government over new institutions while 104 varsities remain short. What's really going on with our education system, specifically with the never-ending issue with the federal government and ASU? It's painful that we have a government that really does not understand that education is more precious to this country than oil. We have a government that does not understand that the way of the future of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is education. We have a government that does not appreciate how much education can bring to the table in the current global happenings. We have a government that Politics 
is the thing for them and not governance. They have drawn a fine line between governance and politics where governance is a distraction to them while politics is what, you know, that is why you can have a, 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 um, a train incident where numbers are starting to come out, the facts and figures are starting to come out, which questions the administration procedure of the Nigeria Railway Corporation, which questions so many things about our administration and our policies. And while that is still on, my, my, my friend and brother, somebody for whom I have great respect for obvious reasons, is declaring for the presidency, which I don't agree with. You know, I can understand. I, 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 I have been able to get into the mindset and see the frustrations and everything. But you see, it's unfortunate that this has happened at a time like this. Okay? Now, when you put all these things together, it just shows that education is a distraction to politicians. And it can wait. It can wait until they get their mandate. What is important to them is their mandate. Just get back to power, get back to power. Service is not the essence for seeking public office. It is power, grab, state capture. And you see, I always say something, and I want to end on this note. If you think that it is wrong for a cat to bark, or you want a dog to meow, the problem is not with the dog or with the cat. It is with you that should have the intellect to know that a cat goes back and a cat will always meow. As we are heading to 2023, the man who is in there for the enterprise, when he gets in there, he will do it. A man who is there for the service, when he gets in there, he will serve. What are you doing as an individual to profile between the two? so that your life, your estate, will be managed by the most competent and not with the most um, endowed to capture. I think that Nigerians should stop blaming politicians and wake up and take up their, their civic responsibilities. All right, Ezekan Yaito, quickly, um, this is quite worrying because uh, the umpire that saddled with the responsibility of conducting elections have raised an alarm, and they are saying that over... 45% of PVCs are invalid. We're looking at 1.3 million uh, there about that figure. And uh, because the process of cleaning up the register, uh, I mean, how did we get to this point? They're also saying that this would be um, a reason of, um, I mean, the reason for all of this would be the issue of ignorance or probably some illegalities that's going on. Uh, how do we even get out of this? 1.3 million, that's a lot. Okay, um, I, I, I'm an architect, so I'm a process person. Question number one is how do people get registered? There's no question of ignorance. We have trained people that go to ask questions and capture. So the answer for me is as clear as day. Complicity. That is that. How they are going to deal with that, I don't know, in terms of their people. Because you ask me to come and register. I come and stand on the line. You ask me what's your name, I tell you. What's your age, I tell you. You ask all the questions, and then you input all those things into your system. You ask me to bring my thumb, I put it there. I finish putting my thumb. You want me to put my face to be captured, whatever. I give you everything you want, and I go home. And you said, oh, your registration was faulty. My question is, number one, how do I know that my registration was faulty? And number two, what did I do wrong? I can't tell. So the problem is on one hand, there's a solution. The solution is that you had captured my contacts. Please send an instant message in every way possible to the people affected that your registration had a challenge early enough. Please, could you go back to the nearest INEC office to rectify? The reason is this. If these people do not know that they have a problem and they know that they had registered, on that day, they are going to go 
to the different registration points and then there's going to be confusion and people are going to be disenfranchised. So lucky enough, INEC has done a great job by cleaning up the register early enough, identifying the problems early enough, alerting the public early enough. They should now go ahead and publish and send to affected locations where the challenges are and set up special desks for rectification. This can be done within a month or two. So the news should be followed by immediate action. If for any reason they have challenge with funding, they should make that known immediately, contact the National um, um, Assembly, and we that are, we are partners with INEC, the Nigeria First Project, the CDC, the Yaga Africa, these are all the people that are partners with INEC to bring it to the public, to take it to the National Assembly, to network with them, to sensitize the people like you are doing now. And because of what you have just said, like you are doing now, people are now going to be asked, please, can you go back to INEC portal and see if you are affected? This information has, will do Nigeria a lot of good. INEC needs to call the media, the influencers, inform them to network with them, call the faith-based organizations to please, in the next one, two weeks, every church leader, every mosque should say, please go and check this way because there were problems. Let's not dwell on the problems. Let's not dwell on who made it. INEC should go in-house, solve their problem, and then Nigerians should go at least three to four months to election. Everybody should know, number one, that their PVC is good, and number two, the exact place they are going to vote. So on that day, there's no confusion. All right. Uh, on a final note, now, Mr. Nyaito, very quickly as we wrap all of this up, but let's talk about, um, the. you remember the uh, pension fraud and uh, the police, uh, sorry, the ex-director has been asked to refund uh, 22.9 billion naira, and he, uh, his jail term has been affirmed for uh, six uh, months. What do you really think? 22 billion out of how many? I think they, they six should have months. been four thereabout. Yeah, six months, you come back, you roll your life. You probably decide not to be in Nigeria again forever change everything, put pressure on a foreign exchange, check out, live your life. How did he take 22 billion plus plus? That is what should in, uh, interest us. Our systems and processes, technology has come to, you know, the moment we start, let, guy, let me end on this note. I don't want to talk about that guy. Please let everybody go and get registered to vote. Go and get registered to vote. Join a political party. Don't buy those fears. Oh, nothing can change. It has to be APC or PDP. Oh, if the time is too short. Those are the lies from the pit of hell. There are things happening in the past two weeks. I've been, they've seen me all over this country, Lagos, Abuja. Young people, vibrant people are taking up things that will shake this whole um, 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 country. God bless President Buhari for the Electoral Act. I wish I could do a synthesis, an analysis of what we have today. Your vote will count. Go and get registered. Mr. President won with less than about 15 million votes. As of today, I can assure you that the activation that we have of the young people, we have over 30 million as of today. They may not all head in one direction, but I want to tell you that go and get registered. If you know you are loved by your people, go and pick a form and contest. Take a small party. I will always say I recommend ADC because that's what's taken today as a third force. I re in the next two, three months, not two, three months, in the next 30 to 45 days, you'll be shocked what is going to happen in Nigeria. The meeting we had in Lagos some days back was just an eye-opener. The entertainers have decided to come on board. Imagine a man like Bonaboy, a man like Whiskey, a man like Davido, a man like Two-Face. Look at all these influencers, Nollywood actors coming together and telling their fans, 
go get registered. We are going to go into this vehicle. And they have been going around looking for the vehicle that will accommodate the, 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 the young people, that will accommodate their, 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 their concerns, and hand over the country back to them. Today, they have almost made a decision on that vehicle. And don't let it go too late. Don't buy that lie of, oh, the time is too short. Nothing is too short. Don't buy that, oh, outside of PDP and APC, there's no other. Those are lies of those institutional, you know, state capture entrepreneurs. Please go and get registered. The guy who stole 22 billion, he will not be able to steal such money again come 2023. And Nigeria will be good. Anybody that tries to tell you things otherwise, don't buy it. All right. Be optimistic and Nigeria will be good. Thank you. Thank and, you. Um, so, thank you so much, Mr. Ezekiel Etuk, for your your thoughts that you have shared. And of course, the Nigerians actually need to do the right thing. Let's get our you know PVCs and vote the right persons in come 2023. It is always a delight to speak to you every Thursday, Mr. Etuk. I feel honored and privileged. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. It's still the breakfast. Uh, we will take a quick break off the press. Uh, when we come back, uh, we'll be looking at uh, the new revenue generation, of uh, gener um, revenue sharing formula, I don't know going generation. But before that, uh, we'll go back at this day in history and see what happened today in April the 14th. <laughs>